start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. to the state line. That's been about a mile, but I don't see no sign. If I can make it there, I'll make it anywhere. It's up to you, new So I, uh, all these tolls, oh no, I'm in New York and it's got all these tolls. The I-Pass is recognized in Illinois, uh, from Illinois in New York and in 15 states up here in the east, northeast area. And, um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. I don't have to worry about it. The road is really, really bumpy in the right-hand lane from all the trucks. Now, I could drive in the left lane, but then the people are going to get pissed off at me because I'm even going, even though I'm going 65, which is the speed limit, you know, people get pissed at you. So I was going to tell you a story, something that happened last night. So last night I pulled into a area by a Cracker Barrel, you know. So the, there was a... Cracker Barrel, a Texas Roadhouse, a Sheets, something like that, Sheets, I think, which is a fast food, um, and an Applebee's. Boy, what a what a choice I had to make for dinner. Now, where would you have picked? Okay, so I actually wanted to go to the um, Texas Roadhouse, but you know what? They didn't want to feed me. I went in there and I said, well, first I called, I, and Every time I called, they wanted me to put their app on my phone. I didn't want to put their app on my phone. I got enough apps on my phone. So I walked in and I said, can I get an order to go? They said, well, if you put, just go to, you know, Applebee's to go. I'm like, I don't want to go online and do it. I just want to order from you. Can I order from you? Well, if you order from us, we're full. We can't take your order. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Nope, if you don't, you got to do it online or we can't take your order. I said, but if I sit down in your restaurant, you would take my order, right? And they said, yeah. I said, but that doesn't make sense, does it? You'll take my order if I sit in your restaurant and order, but you won't take my order if I want to just order from you at the counter and take it to go. You're all filled up. Right. I said, well, you forget it. You don't need my business, obviously. So I walked out and went over. And then, so then I, I called on the phone. The guy answered me at Applebee's. They took my order over the phone, which they wouldn't do at the Texas Roadhouse. They made me, they kept telling me to go to the app. So I ordered from this really nice guy on the phone. I went across the street. The manager was really cool. He kept saying my name like I, like he was, you know, there's a movie, you know, Poltergeist that keeps saying Carol Ann or something like that, which I laugh. I said, you know, I've never seen Poltergeist, but my son, that was one of his favorite movies, I guess. But anyway, so um, he got me my order like that quick because I had a taste for like barbecue ribs. They had like a half a rack of ribs for $13 and I won 20 bucks on the a scratch off. So I had ribs. It cost me five bucks for the ticket and I won 20. So that was a freebie. <laughs> and um, anyway, they're really good. And I got smashed garlic potatoes um, and broccoli. So I just walked over to there and got it. But then but just before that, in the parking lot, there's this big empty lot that I parked in at, that was behind the Cracker Barrel and the Texas Roadhouse. When I was sitting there for a few minutes deciding what I was going to do after I walked Danny, I saw something sitting in the parking lot after this guy had pulled away. So there was this guy sitting in the parking lot talking on the phone. And he had a... Um, it was a truck driver.
driver, but he didn't have a container on the back of his semi. He just had his sleeper truck, you know, just the front end, his tractor. And um, there was a, he was an over the road driver, obviously, because he had the sleeper cab on, you know. And he was sitting on the curb talking on the phone. Then he got in, in his truck and he drove away. And at first I didn't notice it, but then when I was walking Danny, I said, oh my God, there's something sitting on the ground over there. I said, it looks like a wallet. So I go over there and it was a wallet. I thought, well, maybe it's not his. I mean, he should have saw it. It was sitting right there. I mean, why would he not see his own wallet? You know? So I picked it up and it was a wallet and I looked inside it and it had a couple of dollars in there, just singles. And but it had his CDL driver's license or a CDL driver's license. I'm, I'm guessing it was his CDL driver's license. It had a passport card, you know, the not the not the passport book, but the passport card so that if you go to Canada or you can use it for Canada or Mexico uh, to go over the border. So you have the passport card when you go flying it's, instead of having that um, the star or driver's license. So the passport card and a social security card and it had his ATM card or his bank card. So I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, this poor guy is going to go to get gas and he's not going to have his ATM card to pay for his gas. You know? And it, he's a, a couple dollars that it was in his wallet. I mean, I think there was only three or four bucks in there. I didn't even count it, you know, because I, I didn't even bother to look at how much money was in there. But I could see that they were only dollar bills, like three or four dollars. No tens or fives or anything. So, I thought, oh my gosh. Now, I remember about two months ago, or three, two months ago or so, I dropped my ATM card back home in Illinois, and a real nice guy took and walked it into the, my bank branch and reported it. But I had already realized it. I realized like within a half an hour that I must have dropped it when I was getting a propane fill up. And um, I re immediately stopped it and reported it to my bank and went in there the next day and got a new card. So uh, it was Sunday. So, you know, there was nobody to talk to. I couldn't go to a bank branch. So I looked around you know, and I, I was like, gee, well, maybe he's at the, one of these hotels in back of me. Well, I didn't see his truck there. And I figured, well, I'll just put it in my car in case he comes back and uh, realizes it's gone. He didn't come back. And then this morning I got up and I got in my car and I almost, I just totally forgot about it and I got on the road. And then I stopped and I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, I forgot about this guy's wallet. So I figured I would just go into a Chase Bank and talk to the people there and ask him if they can mail him, you know, mail his wallet with all those, you know, important documents. Because if I were to take it to honestly, you know, I'm a retired police officer and this is not at all talking bad about law enforcement. But if I would have given it to the nighttime police officer, they would have dropped it in the evidence locker as found property. And it would have sat in there un until somebody called. And where this guy wouldn't have known where to call for his property because he wouldn't have known where he lost it at. And the people in the evidence room aren't going to try to track him down. They might send a letter to him. And if he doesn't live there anymore, he's not going to get that letter he's never going to get notified. You know, they get thousands and thousands of pieces of found property. You know? So, I called, I did call the bank. However, there is not one bank branch in the area I was in. <laughs> So I told the lady, I said, this is my email. 
if you're able to get to call this man, give him my email, I would be more than happy to put his, I'm sure he's canceled his card by now. I would be more than happy to put his important documents in the mail and send it to that address on his driver's license if that's his address, his current address. Or any address he wants me to mail it to, you know, because the bank's probably got his address. You know, I'll send it to his address. I says, I have my an account with the same bank. I'd be more than happy to send it to that address. If, or if you, if you want to call me back, have the, if the bank wants to call me back and tell me what address to send it to, you know, whatever. Or when I get to my next destination, they do have a bank branch there, and I will just walk into a bank branch and give them the whole wallet, you know, because I'm sure they've canceled his ATM card. But it's like, oh my gosh, could you imagine if he stopped to get gas and maybe he's stranded someplace and that was the only way he could, the only card he had to buy gasoline with in that big truck, you know? I feel really bad because I know if it was me, you know, that's why I don't put all my apples in one basket. So hopefully I'll hear from them from the bank or get an email or something. And we can get this stuff back to them. So back to travels. Okay, here I am at the new campground here. It is Niagara Falls campground and lodging. It's very little. It has a built-in pool. Nice little pool. Water's cold though. The lady says water's still cold. Danny, get over here. Makes you have to pee, doesn't it? Those look like gladioluses. Those are my mom's favorite. Oh, and of course there's some peonies. The peonies. My grandma had peonies in her garden. They used to keep the bugs out of her garden where all her vegetables were. Keep the rabbits out of there too. Okay, here's the showers. Oh, there's an outdoor sink. Maybe I can give Danny a bath out here. My chariot, my limo is here. I'm going on a tour. Here I go. We started at the Whirlpool Flats. And to the left is the Whirlpool Rapids. Beautiful, isn't it? Look at how clear and beautiful and bluish green those waters are. They're absolutely gorgeous. To the right here is the whirlpool. 
what is known as the Whirlpool. And I'm standing, of course, on the American side. This is only 200 feet deep, this water. And from where I'm standing down to where the water begins, it's 200 feet of a drop. Directly across from me is Canada. Yes, Canada. It's absolutely beautiful. Hello, Canada. Yes. That's the wolf. I'm waving the badge, as you can see. Hi, badge. <laughs> it's a lodge right across there. Canada has a lot of things going on when they're open, but all of their attractions are closed right now. Look at that water. It's absolutely gorgeous. Video. I'm doing video. Thank you. Now, everybody wants to know how high the falls is. I can't answer that in just one simple number. That's because being a tour guide, I have to have, and I'm also a tour guide over in Canada, I have to have a tour guide license for the U.S. and Canada. I've got to go and write a test every year to show that I have the knowledge of the area. Over in Canada, the Canadian falls 190 feet high, the American falls 185 feet high. On the American test, the American falls 190 feet high, the Canadian falls 185 feet high. Really, I swear to God, that you, and you have to remember that to get them questions right. So what I do, I tell everybody, I take them two numbers, add them together, divide by two, I tell everybody the Canadian Falls, American Falls are exactly the same height at 187 and a half feet. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. This bridge you're seeing now is called the Rainbow Bridge. So to come on this tour, we started out at up on top of that structure on that bridge. And we got into an elevator at the top of that structure on that bridge. And we rode the elevator down that structure into this gorge. And then got out of the elevator at the bottom. And, and now we're waiting in line here um, on a dock to get into the boat. Where they gave us ponchos, etc. to get onto the boat. To go see the falls so we're down in a gorge where the river is and we're going to go see the falls yes i am a smurf today and it's foggy but the falls are behind me Have you seen her, the rebel girl, in action in Niagara Falls City? Okay, now you're seeing the bridal fall.
falls behind me. I'm a smurf.
I have a real hard time doing this. I'm holding on and taking baby steps over to the side. Oh, the wind, I feel like I'm gonna fall over the edge. Wow. Wow. Woo. Here it is. I'm right at the edge of these falls. In my video, you might have saw these people in yellow. So freaking cool. Look at how clean that water is. You can see the rock underneath. Goat Island. This is what this is. Goat Island. And there's no goats there, but it should be Bird Island because there's tons of birds. Hi, Badge! And they gave us these lovely sandals to wear so we didn't get our own personal shoes all wet. When we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done Oh, the good times just begun We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright
everywhere. They're everywhere. We're at Terrapins Point where Nick Walenda tight roped across Niagara Falls. He started right here where you're seeing now. Well, actually a little bit further back. But then he walked across Niagara Falls from the American Falls right here across to the Canadian Falls. You'll see me pointing across. And he did have to have his passport. When he got to the other side, there were agents standing there waiting for him to check his passport. Now, I didn't tight road across the falls. There you can see the Canadian Falls. Here's the American Falls. Now, you, I didn't do the tight road across. In fact, I didn't even cross over this railing. Well, I did put my arm over the railing to take a picture of a rainbow. And you'll see me take a picture of the rainbow. And somehow, my phone must have went into the Canada side. Because I got this text message telling me, Welcome to Canada. And I didn't show him my passport. Isn't that funny? So shortly here, you're going to see that. Look at that rainbow. Isn't that beautiful? So I tried to get a picture of the rainbow with my face in it, but it didn't quite work out. But it was beautiful. And by this time of the day, it was absolutely gorgeous. It sure was. This was a fascinating, wonderful outstanding experience and I had a really great, great time and I'm so glad that I did this. I've been wanting to do this for several years now. It was just phenomenal. If you have this opportunity, do it. There's me trying to get the rainbow in a picture with me from down below. I hope you enjoyed my video. Thanks for joining me. I know it was long and I hope you made it all the way to the end. Even the sky is falling down.